Well, the nation was uh, was touched indeed by the reuniting of Richard and Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe. Yesterday, the couple gave a, a press conference in which they talked about what life had been like since Mrs. Zaghari Ratcliffe uh, was uh, taken, uh, it was held in a prison in Iran for, what was it, five, five years in the end. That press conference made that pretty clear. Um, but she also said, didn't she, and she disagreed with her husband Richard at one point when she said, actually, there were five, when he said that the authorities didn't handle the whole thing really well, she disagreed and said, well, we had uh, five foreign secretaries in six years. Um, some, suddenly on Twitter, the word un ungrateful was trending. Uh, and there are those who say, look, if you're going to criticise anybody, make sure you start by criticising the Iranian regime. They were the ones ultimately responsible for holding Mrs. Uh, Zagari Ratcliffe. Let's debate this then. Uh, Alan Mendoza is with the Henry Jackson Society. Scarlett Maguire is with me here in the studio. Alan, we'll start with you, because I, th I think you take the view that actually she has... Uh, I'll choose my words carefully, because, you know, she's, she's been through a hideous ordeal, but you, you feel there's, there's, a, there's a whiff of ingratitude here. I wouldn't say ingratitude. That's probably the wrong word uh, to use here. As you've mentioned, she's gone through an ordeal. And frankly, anyone who's been imprisoned wrongly for six years um, and, you know, kind of uh, with the kind of tactics that we used against her in prison has the right to come to whatever conclusion they would like. But the, the main problem is that, that the situation doesn't stack up when it comes to the facts of the case. The case basically resolves around the Iranian authorities having wrongly imprisoned her, wrongly treated her for six years, used her as a bargaining tool for their own nefarious purposes, and the British government appears to be getting the blame. Now, again, without wanting to uh, look at her own circumstances and comment on that, the reality is that there's only one uh, sort of figure to blame here, and that is the Iranian regime, rather than the British government. Scarlett Maguire, just on the point, I know we read this slightly differently, but when, I, when she said, you know, five foreign secretaries in six years, um, I, I thought that was a criticism of a, of a situation where the government wasn't able to present a coherent negotiating strategy. You get one foreign secretary, they decide what they're going to do about Nazanin's guy Ratcliffe, and then they're out of office and replaced by a new foreign secretary. And when I look at that, I think, well, that's just how democracies work. Uh, and to criticise that, it's almost on one level to criticise de the democratic processes that give us elected cabinets. And Iran doesn't have that because it's a dictatorship. I don't think she meant that at all. I mean, what she meant was that it shouldn't have taken five foreign secretaries to get her out. It should have taken her one. And, I mean, we must remember that the, the man who is now prime minister, when he was foreign secretary, actually made a terrible gaffe by saying that she was working out there when the whole point was that she was on holiday and actually made things worse for her. I mean, it, it, she doesn't owe this country gratitude. She, We had a duty to get her out. We owed uh, Iran £400 million. We'd owed, we'd owed Iran that for, for decades. An international court found that we owed that money and we still refused to give it to them. When some Iranians came over here to try and negotiate, they were arrested at Heathrow. So the Iranian government, who are pretty bloody appalling, can I say, but the Iranian government decided that there was only one way to do it. I mean, it was terrible. She was a pawn, but she was a pawn between two governments. And I think she had an absolute right to say, you know, they should have got me out faster. Ella Mendoza, as Scarlett Maguire presents it, it's, it's very transactional. We, we owed the money. We paid the money. She was freed. It's, it was that simple. Well, it's not quite that simple because otherwise the government would have paid the money uh, right at the start. The reality is that firstly, you don't take hostages to secure debts. If you've got a financial crisis at home, for example, you don't start holding a neighbour's hostage, do you, until X and Y pay up in that way. So the idea that we're somehow uh, going to excuse Iran's behaviour by saying, oh, no, they acted perfectly well because they were owed the money is just ludicrous and nonsensical. Um, and secondly, of course, there were problems with paying the money. Iran's been sanctioned internationally um, for the last uh, 13, 14 years because of various infractions. And it, you can't simply give them money. If you do, you're aiding and abetting um, a terrorist regime, essentially. And we still don't quite know 
how the British government has gotten the money, but they claim uh, that it's been done in, um, in a way that does not flout those sanctions. Very unclear how that's happened, but there were very obvious logistical problems about handing over that amount of money to a terrorist regime. Uh, and moral questions, Scarlett Maguire, as well. I mean, that 400 million... I mean, there's a lot of money, 400... Half a billion quid that now could be, even as we speak, being spent on Iran's illegal nuclear programme, for instance. Yeah, look, this £400 million was... was uh, I mean, because of the international court, we had to sort of put it in escrow. So it's been sitting there waiting to find out. I, like everybody else, had no idea how the deal was done. But given there was a deal, why did it take five years? That's what I'm saying. I am not excusing Iran at all. I think it's a terrible regime. I think the way they treated her uh, and, and the other, frankly, hostages were appalling. I do not think that... that but what she was talking about was that somebody said, are you grateful? And she said, no, I should have been, I should have been let out much faster. And that's, I think that's right. I think we had, we had a duty of care. She was a British citizen uh, and we should have got her out faster. Alan, can we just expand this out a little bit? To, to, I suppose it's a little bit of media navel-gazing, but it will seem to some people sometimes that there is an inclination on the parts uh, of the great British media to sometimes overlook or, or minimise the role played by the, the, the perp, the perpetrator in this. I mean, I'm rather making your point for you that you've already made, but, but, but I see it not just in this co the context of this story, but often lots of stories, you know... We, we, We've got a, if you take an, an Islamist terror attack, for instance, people are very quick, uh, not always to, to blame the perpetrator, but talk about failings in MI5's intelligence gathering or the prevent program uh, or whatever else it is, rather than pointing to the perpetrator. And that's one example. And I think, you know, this might be another example of, of people looking at this story and not seeing the wood for the trees and not seeing the fact that the, at the end of the day, Nazanin Zagai Ratcliffe was held by the Iranian regime, a vile regime that is a stranger to democracy. Yes, I mean, I think this is the, uh, the, the key problem. We do have a tendency to ignore the, the fact that bad people do bad things, bad regimes do bad things. Um, we've got you know, a similar example happening right now in Russia, Ukraine. We all find some perfectly normally sensible people suggesting, well, actually, he was provoked, Putin, you know, the West and NATO uh, gradually moved their borders closer towards him. But again, there are ways if you if you uh, uh, have a problem with a certain issue or with a set of issues, there are ways of resolving them. And we are all, um, you know, we have an international system. We have ways and mechanisms that you can resolve those things without resorting to violence or indeed to illegal activity. And unfortunately, when those things happen, you're right, the not enough focus is put on the perpetrators, the people who are breaking and flouting the laws. And instead, we're somehow told that it's the victim's fault, or if not the victim, the bystanders, they're the ones who are to blame rather than the person who's actually gone and committed the crime, as it were. Uh, Scarlett McGuire, one final thought on this. Uh, I mentioned the media navel gazing, but we ought to reflect on the fact that the reason we're having this conversation is because this couple, maybe advised by the Foreign Office or others, have decided to come before the cameras, hold a press conference. They could have enriched themselves. They could have held back their story, sold serialisation rights to a Sunday newspaper. Um, they would have been then bombarded by journalistic inquiries that might have made it that bit harder to get on with their lives. But they are to be applauded, are they not, for, for choosing this media strategy to, go, to be open about things from, in, in a press conference for everyone? Yes, I, I think they are. I, I think it's also a very clever media strategy of saying, here I am. These are the questions I can answer. I, I don't want to talk about the dark thoughts that kept me going. I mean, she did quite reasonably deflect some of the awfulness. She didn't want to talk about the awfulness of, of being on her own. And, and then she goes, and now can you leave us alone? Because we need to get back to our family. And, and, and I hope that that's what, that's what we let her do, is, is that wherever they go and live, that they are just left alone to try and sort themselves out. Because, um, I mean, listening to the tales of people who've been taken hostage in all sorts of ways, it takes years. And there's that little girl in the middle of it all. Scarlett Maguire, Alan Mendoza, thanks both very much indeed.